I receive hundreds of emails from people linking to various YouTube videos where you see some kind of device that claims to generate free energy. They almost always include some kind of alternator, which I have here, and a giant flywheel. And I understand that these two devices are the most strongly associated in people's minds with generating electricity. So how do I test all these ideas in a way that will help us all understand whether these things can work or not? So I built this. This crazy contraption is designed specifically to test free energy ideas. I've got various dials here, which will tell us the inputs and outputs. If we keep doing this, we're either going to find the next billion dollar idea, or we're going to get some great lessons in physics. Either way, I think it's worth it. Let's get started. Okay, if we're going to test free energy ideas, we need to be really careful with our terminology here. And also we need to think about exactly what we want to test. Using the scientific method, we want to make sure everything is measurable, repeatable. That's the goal. And when I say careful with terminology, I'm specifically thinking about the word free, because sometimes that means different things to different people. For example, we can be tearing apart some scam video about using alternators to get free energy. And then someone will say, well, why don't you just add solar panels and then you have free energy? It's like, okay, but you're conflating two different ideas. Solar panels obey the laws of physics. We understand solar energy. That's no different than dragging an extension cord to your neighbor's house and you've got free energy. So there's an obvious energy source. So the meaning of free is a little bit different here. And in some cases, when people say free, what they really just mean is free to them. For example, putting solar panels on your house is eventually free to you. You had to spend money up front, but you do recoup that cost and energy savings. And eventually those solar panels produce more value to you than what you paid for them. And you call that free. It's perfectly fine. That's not what we're debating in this video. What I want to focus on is those who claim that you can multiply energy by adding gears or pulleys to multiply the energy. That is super easy to check and you can check it yourself. You can get your bicycle and check this concept. It's so easy to test. So let's just lay it to bed and try it and see what happens. How about transformers? People say, just add a transformer. You step up the voltage and you've multiplied the energy. But did you? We can check that and see exactly what happens. It's easy to test, measurable, repeatable. Let's do that. What if, what if you add capacitors? Don't, doesn't that Somehow, I don't know what people think capacitors do. Capacitors are just fancy batteries, really. <laughs> we can add capacitors and see what happens so that you can understand what capacitors do. That's what I wanna show you. And that's also what I mean by either we're gonna prove the next billion dollar idea or we're gonna get some great lessons in physics because many of these concepts feel like they should work. That's why I'm so interested in this. Magnets are really mystical and amazing to watch. When you push on magnets and they bounce off of each other and there's this invisible force in between, there's something incredible about that. And so it makes it easier to think you can just get free energy from that. With that stuff in mind, I decided to start with the machine I built several years ago where I wanted to test the horsepower of electric motors. If you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description. That's a good place to start because I already have several meters there to measure input and output power. I only need to reconfigure it so that I can switch the various motors out. I can put an alternator on there if I want. I can add a flywheel if I want. So let's take a look at the 3D model and you can see where we ended up. Here is the final design. On this side, we can add our driving motor, whatever is going to push this system. Over here, I've got a DC motor mounted, and I wanted this over here because this can be used as a motor or a generator, and so it's a good way to test various ideas of input power versus output power. In fact, I've already used this particular setup to show you how regenerative braking works, and that was the video just prior to this one. I'll put a link in the description for you. These two giant objects are flywheels. I learned in my regenerative braking video that many people didn't recognize these as flywheels. I know because I got a bunch of comments from people saying, why don't you add a big flywheel and that will offset the braking effect, then you can have free energy. But it doesn't offset the braking effect. That's kind of the whole point of the video. But as a teacher on the internet, this taught me two things. One, people don't quite know what flywheels do. So we're gonna explain that in this video. And number two, people have this mental image of what a flywheel is. They're picturing the big heavy spoked wheel like what you see on old machinery. And that's the mental image they have associated with energy. And if you don't know what that does, 
you just kind of think it creates energy. Scammers, of course, are also aware of this human quirk. And that's, again, why you see so many videos with uh, flywheels and the thumbnail. So that's the myth that we want to fix today. But thinking about the thumbnail, I decided I should print a spoked wheel, which looks very similar to what people expect. And then I can explain in the video that this is actually the same thing. You heard that correctly. I made a fake flywheel so that I could teach you about real flywheels. These two devices are called PTOs, and we're gonna talk about this more later in the video, but basically it allows me to flip a switch and disconnect the motor from the flywheel without having to try to get the belt off. And I wanna be able to do that on both sides, and so you can see there's a PTO on both sides. Over here is where all my various um, meters, power meters will be, so we can measure everything and, and see exactly what's happening. And as you may have noticed on the screen, I use SolidWorks to design all of my machines. And SolidWorks is basically the industry standard for CAD tools, and they also happen to be the sponsor of today's video. For a long time, SolidWorks was only considered for professionals, but now they have SolidWorks for makers, which is just incredible. It's got all the powerful tools that you get from SolidWorks, and it's accessible. It's like $48 a year to have access to the most powerful CAD tool on the planet. And SolidWorks is the only tool that I've used for this pretty much since the beginning of my channel, but it gets better than that because they created a special link for me which gives you an additional 20% off. So now it's $38 a year. So you get CAD and CAM, you get X-Design, X-Shape, all these powerful tools that are on their website. And I've made videos and tutorials about how to use these different CAD packages. So even if you are a complete beginner, there's so much help available online to get you started, including some of my videos. So I strongly recommend that you give it a try. It's solidworks.com slash Jeremy Fielding to get 20% off. The bottom line is this is the most powerful tool that I use to design my projects. And I strongly recommend you give it a try. Solidworks.com slash Jeremy Fielding and you'll get another 20% off of the <laughs> already low price of $48. To spin up our generator, I'm gonna need some sort of mechanical power source. And I, I definitely don't wanna hand crank this generator. Fortunately for us, way up here in the crevices of my attic, I have quite the collection of motors and generators that I've salvaged over the years. These come from treadmills here. So these are mostly DC on this side. That one's three phase, which is what I want because it'll, it will allow me to speed control it. But the RPM is wrong. Those have gears, which I don't want. And um, okay, that one's also a uh, full pole. We may have to use a full pole motor and use some gears. This one's three phase. Uh, there you go, 3,400 RPM. So that tells me that that's a two pole motor. And because it's three phase, I can speed control it from zero all the way up to about 3,400 RPM. We can get even higher speeds if we want by using pulleys. So let's get this guy downstairs, and start building our rig. All right, I think I'm finally ready to watch this program. I've got it set about one inch above where the part would be, just because I want to watch the whole process. We don't break it again. That's enough getting nervous. Well, that's interesting. I have definitely said something wrong. So assuming everything is set up correctly, tool number one should go straight over the part, dead center, and be a half inch above the part. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm gonna take a minute to point out just how little space I had left to get this part made. The tool needed to be long enough to get all the way to the bottom of the part, but short enough to not hit the part when changing tools. <laughs> Hi 
And as you can see, I used every bit of that toilet roll. <laughs> So here we're going to install a sensor as well as a magnet so that we can keep track of how fast our flywheel is spinning. Well, I thought I had a pretty clever system here worked out, but there's way too much friction. This part is supposed to be able to spin freely and it can kind of spin, but I can also hear some pieces dragging inside of here. This is a PTO, it's a clutch mechanism that allows you to connect and disconnect whatever the driven thing is to the power source. Like in a lawnmower, for example, the engine will be driving this part and it can just spin freely. And let's say when you're ready to engage the blades and make the blades spin, you could connect this to the battery, this clutch would grab the disc, and then this part will spin with it. Right now it doesn't spin. You can see the engine can spin and this part is free. 
But, uh, and I have one on both sides because I've got multiple experiments. I have another motor that I'm gonna place here. I can hear something dragging. Now, maybe that's perfectly fine in a lawnmower. You've got an engine running. Who cares if you're wasting a little bit of uh, energy with a little bit of friction, if that saves you a lot of money, and i.e. making this part significantly cheaper makes the lawn more cheaper, and thus uh, maybe the manufacturer was going for lower cost rather than uh, lower friction. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. I follow the instructions. This part is supposed to be able to move a little bit, and it can. In fact, I tried it the other way. I tightened it down, and it got much worse, so I'm definitely doing that right. Uh, this piece right here, can move a little bit, and if we connect it to the battery the way you would in a lawnmower, my plan was to wire these up to switches so that I can flip them on and off with the switch. But right now I'm just gonna connect it directly to power so that you can see what happens when you connect it to something similar to a lawnmower battery. And you can hear the clutches engage. Okay, now that everything's engaged, these should transfer the power. And uh, I mean, that's even a little bit worse but you can see that these are spinning with it, right? The whole mechanism can spin. And again, this is according to the instructions, the installation instructions, these should be able to wiggle a little bit and they do. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. I don't know. I've never tried to use these in a project before. If you guys know what I'm doing wrong, please let me know. I'd love to use these in a different project, but um, for now, I'm just gonna take these off and let's move forward. So this is interesting. Here I can see that it's not perfectly centered. Look at that. So it wasn't machined properly. It's lined up with the bearing, it looks like. But you can see a wobble and there's a tiny drag. Now, keep in mind, if this was installed in your lawnmower, you'd have no idea. The noise and the other stuff that's going on, it's likely that this kind of deformity, if it's even considered a deformity, would be acceptable for most customers, but the effect on performance would be so little, you would hardly notice. So, I don't know. Feel free to leave me some comments if you're an expert in this and you know what's going on. I'd be, I'd love to know. Ladies and gentlemen, through the magic of editing, it's a whole week later, but we finally have a setup that's ready to go. I took the PTOs off, as you see, and I still wasn't quite satisfied with how freely it would spin. So I also changed out the bearings. Uh, these bearings are okay, but the grease is kind of thick, and I decided I wanted something that was even smoother. So I installed some needle bearings, and these guys are so much better. Watch this. Yeah, buttery smooth. I love it. Okay, so you can hear a little bit of a noise there, and that's actually the keyhole rubbing against the needles on the inside of the bearing. Can't really get rid of that noise until I fill in the keyhole with something. Now that we have our whole system set up, let's talk about the flywheel. A flywheel is basically a convenient way to store kinetic energy. You could think of this as the mechanical version of a battery. When you charge a battery up, you've got stored chemical energy, and when you connect the terminals, you discharge that energy from the battery. With a mechanical battery, you charge it up by spinning it up, so you charge it up with speed, and when you connect it to a generator, you drain off that speed the same way you drain a battery, and you can use that to produce power. When you run out of speed, you can no longer produce power. And in fact, it's often called a mechanical battery because it behaves that way. So here's the moment we have been building up to this entire video. The most important question you can be asking right now is why does the flywheel slow down when I connect it to a generator? It doesn't even matter how you connect them. The shafts could be directly coupled to them, which would be the most efficient way to do it. They be, can be connected with pulleys. You can use a different ratio of pulleys to get different speeds. You can use gears. All of those scenarios will cause the flywheel to slow down. But why? That's the question we answer in the next video. Now, because of a weird fluke in my schedule, the next video actually was published before this video, so it's already live. You can go watch that video right now. I show you science experiments where you can test this concept yourself at home. We're gonna run this rig here. You can see the flywheel slow down. You can understand what regenerative braking is. All of that is explained in part two, which is right here. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.